Um, okay, so while taking a look at your IMDb, um, we couldn't help but notice that you are from New Jersey before anything else. Um, and I am a Jersey girl myself. I'm a Jersey Shore girl. So what part of Jersey are you from? Um, I'm from Hazlitt, Monmouth County. Hazlitt, where, okay. where are you from? I'm from um, the LBI region. I'm from Barnegat. I actually did grow up in Manalapan in Monmouth County, though. <clears throat> sure. I know the area as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're actually going to Cape May this weekend on Friday. Oh, yeah. fantastic. So travel Rex, let us know. I'm from yeah. Houston, so she's my New Jersey tour guide. It's true. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, there are many parts of New Jersey that are just gorgeous. And many not so gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, very true. <laughs> I think we'll get to that later in yeah. the questions. <laughs> Okay, well, why don't we just start getting into some craft-based questions. Um, okay. So tell us how you first got into acting. Uh, wow. Wow. It was on the <laughs> Jersey Shore. No way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, my, when, when I was three, my parents moved to, uh, we're looking at a house in Hazlitt, New Jersey. Uh, we were living in North Jersey, in West New York, New Jersey. Uh, uh, and uh, I guess they wanted to get out of the city or just be somewhere where they could have a backyard. And uh, we went to a restaurant called the Shore Point Inn. Have you ever heard of it? The Shore Point Inn, it sounds, it sounds familiar. It sounds very Jersey. It does sound very Jersey. <laughs> it is. Of course it is, yeah. And so I stood up uh, in a booth and sang happy birthday to my brother. And uh, the waitress brought out a cake and that was my first paying job. And it wasn't my brother's birthday. Oh! oh that is, <laughs> that, is oh. that was a lure for the rest of my life. Somebody might pay me for doing, for lying. Especially in the form of cake, which we're, we're big fans of. Oh, we are big fans of cake here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, okay, on that kind of note, um, were there any <laughs> roles or, you know, films that you watched that inspired you to continue that path of performing? Well, it didn't really, it was sort of unreal for me until I, um, until I was invited to do a show at the Barn Theater in Rumson, New Jersey in 1977 and um, began working with Lois McDonald, who owned the place and made wonderful friends there and that was a, a wonderful summer theater thing that happened 44 years ago, um, uh, last August. So um, that was when I really started doing it. Of course, in grammar school, you do some plays, you spend some summers doing some summer theater work and that sort of thing, but it was never really serious for me. It was always a social event uh, um, until, 1977, although it was a social event for me in 1977 too. It got really serious when I went to Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers. Yeah. Yeah. Or it got really serious when I went into New York, New York and tried to live there for a while and it was just really hard in 78, 79. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, especially yeah, New York City, right? New York is... um, okay, so you definitely started, you know, in theater and on stage. So kind of what's what's the story behind or what's your process of going between performances on stage and on screen? Um, well, let me just say that I did a lot of musicals when I started out. They were all musicals. I can sing pretty well. So, so that was the, the introduction for me doing theater then. And when I graduated from Rutgers, I went to Chicago. Okay. And uh, I lived there for 16 years. And, and that's when I really started focusing on the acting and uh, uh, and the acting for film and television uh, was just another extension for me then uh, of realistic moment to moment talking and listening. Um, and that was, uh, I didn't do much film right away because I went to Chicago to teach um, uh, the Meisner technique. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I stopped teaching after about uh, six years of that, just because I was, I thought I was procrastinating and uh, I wasn't that great of a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're Although glad I you got back into the craft. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, I just got off the phone with a student of mine who uh, left my classroom in 84 uh -huh. and, and went to Juilliard. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's well, so actually, yeah. I, I don't know if we've said where we are. We're in, um, we're on 96th Street right now. And yeah. we just walked by Juilliard from class today. Yeah, we walk oh, past wow. it every day. We go to Fort Lincoln Center. So we're right across the street. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. My gosh, you guys are go-getters. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Good for you. Are you in the theater? Well, actually, um, I'm a dramatic writer. Um, and I yeah. study film and television. Yes. Oh my so, gosh, that's fantastic. Very exciting. Yes, so yes. we're so excited to have you because you kind of encompass a lot of our interests. Um, yeah. So like for me, like I worked at Williamstown Theater Festival. I'm doing my honor senior thesis where I'm, I'm adapting a screenplay I wrote for the stage. So yeah, yeah that's kind of like, there he is. I know. I know. Oh, works out that also is well. very, very exciting. Yeah. Now, you know, the transfer between the two, it really, you know, no matter what they say, of course, the suggestion is, is that the acting really is the same, but it's not the same. You have a house of, you know, uh, 4,500 people in some cases. In other cases, it's 50 or 40 or I'm doing a show now. I'm doing a one person show in Los Angeles uh, with uh, the, the most people we can fit in the theater is 35. Partly, it's a small space, but also it's COVID related. So it's safe, it's safe, we're taking safe precautions. So it is really different mm -hmm. theater and, and film acting. Uh, and every time I do another show uh, on TV or on film, I am just so surprised at the things I learned. Strange, they say do less, do less, do less, but I see a lot of people doing less and I don't see anything, yeah. yeah. you know? So there's a lot of work that you do internally before you get to the set, at which point you have to put that aside and do your listening and answering. It all of a sudden becomes a, everything you planned on and that wonderful performance you saw up on the screen for yourself before you got to the set, you have to put aside and work with the other people, which is sort of a, that's where the love fest happens. Mm -hmm. That's where it's just people being together, even though there are people in the, you know, um, all over the place, you know, craft services and behind the camera and fiddling with a coat over here, a costume over here, somebody's hemming your pants here. I mean, it's, it's a crazy thing. It is very different. But, um, um, and I love both. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. a great answer. Yeah, that's a fantastic answer. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, of course, to move on to American Horror Story, we saw you in episode four of American Horror Story Double Feature as Ray Cunningham on that TV, right off screen, right over there. <laughs> um, and you were husband to Francis Conroy's Belmoir. And we got to say, you were not the most likable guy on that screen. <laughs> um, so walk us through your American Horror Story audition process and don't leave out the gory details. Well, I was teaching when I got that audition. Uh, I was in the process of teaching high school. I was teaching high school students. And I think I was teaching Hamlet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Big Shakespeare fans here. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, so am I. And I was teaching Hamlet. And I was so involved in needing to lesson plans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that I was doing auditions probably five times a week and setting up the camera and setting up the lights and doing the whole at home audition thing. And I, I was really fast and, you know, learning the scene and getting it up and, and hurrying out so that my wife, who was also a teacher last year, teaching eighth grade, could read with me on the other side of the camera to do it. Now, the script did not change very much from the time of the audition to the shoot. And uh, so let me just, so I, given that little piece of information, I had to apologize to my wife before we started. Oh. Because it was just so awful. Yeah. So actually the next question was going to be that um, Ray puts his wife through a, a lot of emotional torment. Even before he admits to cheating on her, he had some very sharp and very heartbreaking things to say to her. And he ended up dead for it. Um, so what was your reaction to reading this script and to finding out your character's arc? 
Um, having lived a, a little bit of a life uh, before getting that audition and also seeing my share of, my fair share of unhappy marriages. I've only been married once, by the way, um, <laughs> as a footnote. Um, the only way you could do this scene is to understand that they didn't start out like this. And no matter how sad that is, and it really is very sad, you end up in a place where you get to be able to talk so brazenly to your partner who is in another place. You must have gone through something awful to get there. And I've seen people treat other people quite poorly who you would never think that would happen. Um, and it's just a horrible thing. I think it's just a horrible way to end up. Just a, and, and I have to say, as much as demons, the devil, transformative personalities and, and physicalities happen on this show, I felt like I was actually going through something. I felt like I was being transported. I feel like I was possessed. N -n now, uh, possessed, not because I had to read these lines, but because um, uh, that anyone could become this, that I could become this. Uh, Wally Shawn, you know who Wally Shawn is, right? Wally Shawn. He, there's a line in the appendix to Aunt Dan and Lemon, and the line is, the ease with which the world could, uh, no, the ease with which, I'm, I think I'm paraphrasing, you might want to get the appendix just in case, the ease with which the world could fall up, no, sorry. The ease with which a fly can land on a queen's nose is the ease with which the world can fall apart like something rotten. Wow. Yes. And it is, uh, that's what it's like to do these auditions in the afternoon in between classes and uh, what it's like to uh, tell your wife you're, it's over. Wow. Okay. That was yeah, that beautiful, a beautiful answer. answer. Um, and it actually Thank segues you. perfectly into what we wanted to talk about next, which was, um, I think the, the awfully beautiful thing about horror in general, but um, especially the season of American Horror Story, is that the horror is driven by human elements, and the supernatural forces are there to kind of act as a catalyst to heighten these elements and heighten the little horrors in, inside of us. Um, and your character happened to be one of those humans that carried a lot of weight for the horror of the episode. So as an actor, did you feel pressure? Like, what was the preparation like to bring the horror to American Horror Story like that? I was on the page. I thought it was on the page. Um, it is horrible. It's awful. Um, and it's a mundane uh, uh, evil. It's the mundane evils that happen every day when, you know, someone's, someone's yelling in a grocery store at people like there's venom coming out of their mouths. And this is a venomous and a horrible time where people are feeling very free to um, speak poorly about another human being who goes through whatever they may go through during the day and treat them as if they're dirt. It's a, uh, uh, my preparation for that was listening to the writers uh, and um, and knowing also how beautiful Francis is, how we all love Francis. Everybody loves Francis. I go into the costume fitting. I don't even know who my wife is yet. And they're talking about Fran. Oh, she's so beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, is that Fran Conroy? Yeah, I, I knew it and I knew it no matter. And the more evil I was to her, the better off the scene would work, I think. The, and they don't pull any punches. 
It's awful. And just at the time where she's in the zone. She's, you know, Michael Jordan up there. And this is it. This is it. She's right in the fine point of being Michael Jordan with mm -hmm. greatness. Mm -hmm. And I come in as if I have discovered myself. So uh, as much as <laughs> as much as actors don't like to say that it's all about us, it's all about me. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but, okay, we'll move yeah. on to the next question. Ray um, has quite the gory death scene. And would you be able to walk us through the special effects process for that scene? Uh, not specifically, I don't think, but partly because I, I, um, I don't know all the lingo, you know, although I've been in the theater for 44 years. Um, it was, um, but I, I, the one thing I can say, it was, per it was perfectly enjoyable, just. <laughs> really fun the even getting fitted for a um um you know a new neck, a new neck. <laughs> uh and uh you know and they put all machinations and hoses in here and uh so even that was an enjoyable process it was so exciting now halloween is not my favorite holiday even though my daughter uh who is an actress it's her birthday Oh, that's, happy oh, birthday to her. It's coming yeah, soon. That's, that, yes, sort of soon. Uh, and it, it, for that reason, it is my favorite holiday. But Halloween was never my favorite holiday because I never liked getting into costume. And, you know, everybody asks me why. You're an actor. I said, well, if you want to pay me, then I'll get into costume. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I really enjoyed getting killed. It was a lot of fun. And she was terrific. And after she sucked my cheek, my, my neck, and we just both burst into laughter. It was just gorgeous. It was gorgeous. It was the first oh. time we kissed. Oh. <laughs> how, many, how many times did you have to die? Uh, twice. Twice, twice, okay. Not too yeah. bad, yeah. For a number, you know, we do these, we do the scenes in different ways. You know, we, we, she, she does the slice, Right, I think she did that probably five or six times, and then, uh, uh, and then we. I think I just fell down twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, good to know. Um, and to speculate, what moments do you think flashed for Ray Cunningham's eyes before his bloodthirsty wife slit his throat? Um. Well, I could say something funny, and I will. Uh, um, probably, well, if you, if I knew that was a part of who you were, I might, this might not have happened. Yeah, that is a good answer. Yeah. Um, and not that I would, not that I would do it for my own safety, but boy, what a color that brings. In. Yeah. And of course, you know, these, these, these drugs that they're giving out that give people this power and, and this season is, uh, is a message from the writers, from Ryan to the audience. You don't need horror in your life to take chances, you know, and, and to really strive to do the best, be the best you can be at anything. But that's me as a father speaking, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's spot on. And that's why I'm yeah. in love with this season. Mm -hmm. I, just, yeah. I just, that last scene in the most recent episode with Sarah Paulson, um, that was, that was heavy. It didn't matter as long as she was satisfied with her work. That was all that yeah. mattered. It didn't matter if she was that's, a pale person. Man. That's great. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I know that you appeared in Six Feet Under, um, but I know that you were also killed before you had the chance to interact with Francis Conroy's character. Had you worked yeah. with her before the season of American Horror Story? Never. And how was it? I mean, you've given oh, us so much was, already, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was wonderful. She's, you know, it's a lot of work, uh, this stuff. And the scripts, um, uh, you know, I talked to her about this, and the scripts... Uh, are hidden a lot. 
I think she has an idea of what the season is about, but really specifically, uh, and it's week to week. Sometimes the new scripts happen immediately. Ours was pretty much sturdy the whole time, as I mentioned through the audition. But uh, but it's a lot of work for 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 uh, for her. Um, and I, I listen. I, it's, she's a good worker. Yes. Um, and the one thing that we were, that she was actually talking about as we're changing things a little bit in one of the scenes we're doing toward the end, she said, what, we, what we're asked to do is inhuman. It's just really to repeat the same thing over and over again. It's just craziness. Uh, and the last thing you wanna do is repeat it exactly or do it in a particular way, but her consistency and her consistency of availability, uh, you know, uh, is is uh, is something that comes with a lot of practice, a lot of consistent practice on when you're on camera a lot, which uh, which she has been over the last uh, number of dozen years. So, um, so uh, but she was wonderful. She was a, she was lovely, lovely uh, as. As I said to my wife right before the audition, I'm sorry. And she said, why? Um, I said, well, you'll see. Let's just get, <laughs> get it over with. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Fran was off book when, when, uh, when we did that scene, you know, both scenes. And I, I, when I first met her, I said, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do to you. <laughs> And uh, she didn't apologize to me. <laughs> Honestly, right. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, I have to apologize. I have to you know what, Gabby? I can't hear you. Oh no! Oh no! It's not Gabby. It's uh, Kathleen. Kathleen. Yes. Can you hear me now? Say it again. Yes. Go ahead. Our our roommate has two parakeets in his room, so if you hear some off camera chirping, chirping. yeah, that's what it is. Um, okay. Good. Well, in that same vein of Gabby's question, um, what was it like to have worked on Home Alone with Macaulay? And then again, decades later, you get to work with him on a very different type of project. Um, I like Macaulay. I, I really like him. Now, I haven't spoken to him but once since we both sat near each other for the... Uh, I was right next to him and his friends when we saw the premiere of Home Alone back in 91, I think. Uh, and he was just a delight. And I was on the very first day of shooting for that show, for that movie, for Home Alone. Oh, my gosh. It was the very first day of shooting in Kenilworth, uh, Illinois. And it was a huge snowstorm on that very day. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was a delight. He was a delight. Just he was just so sweet and cute and wonderful, and the old man in the in the movie, Robert's Blossom. Uh, he's a he was a poet. He was a wonderful guy. I mean, I I really had a wonderful day that day. It was wonderful. And then when I first moved out to Los Angeles in 99, 1999, Oh, about five years later, I think I saw Macaulay at Hugo's in West Hollywood, which is a wonderful restaurant. Um, um, I, we both saw each other and he smiled, we smiled, we waved and I went over and I said, it's been a long time. I'm so happy for your success. So well, it's good to see you again. And he didn't call me Herb, <laughs> but I know I was thinking it, but <laughs> um, it's sort of a lovely reunion. Although yeah. I wish I would have had a scene with him. Yeah. So you didn't get to see him at all during production? I, I didn't, no. Mm. No, but he had a scene with Dennis and, uh, you know, so that's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, um, okay. What was your favorite um, American Horror Story season um, before the show? Well, I'm liking this one the best. Yeah. And I, I sort of agree with you with that. I, I love this message. Uh, Although Sarah Paulson's first season, I love too. I love Sarah oh. Paulson. 
Yeah, she well, is fantastic. She is, yeah. We've known each other and I did a movie with her, oh, a long time ago. Oh my 15, gosh. 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. well, everything really is so interconnected. Yeah, it in really this world. is, yeah. That's... It is, it's a small world. It's, it was a movie called Bug. I don't remember what year it was. It might have been 2000. No, okay. I take it back. You know when it was? It was 2000 because it came out uh, October of 2001, right after 9-11. Right, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so awesome. uh, yes, and I, I met her through a good friend, another good friend. Every, it's all six yeah, degrees what a network. Much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, if you've been around enough and you're gonna get to know everybody, like Willie, who died yesterday. Oh my God! You know, yes. I, I, I haven't, I never knew Willie uh, um, um, personally, but mm -hmm. we were in the same audition rooms for, you know, 10 years. Oh wow, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 so yeah I know. Devastating news. Uh, yeah, I know, it's awful. Um, uh, well, what would be your personal dream American Horror Story season theme? If you, if Ryan came up to you and asked, like, where should we set the story? What should be the big motif? What would you pitch? Oh, that's going to take some thought. <laughs> huh. um, well, I think it would be in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think now I'm sort of an old white guy. You can tell. And old white guys are getting angry, you know, because yeah. they're getting left out, they're getting canceled and that sort of thing. I'd like to see some reason brought to their heads about why all this is true and why it's happening. You know, I would really like, I'd like to, I'd like to see the show involved in not only current issues, but I'd like to really see him get involved in current politics. And I would love to see horror involved. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <we> all, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and the magic, the magic of the mystical and possible. And it's gotta be scary. So listen, you got white guys in it. And they're always scary. No, it's kind of writing I mean, itself. Yeah, it really like, is. <laughs> Um, well, are there that would be memory? cool. There are issues and situations throughout the years that he's done that and he's used those things. But I always think that, you know, well, anyway, no, I, I, agree. I, I, always I want totally to agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Um, so kind of on that same note, like, are there any other um, Ryan Murphy productions that you would really like to be involved with? Well, I did do 911 Lone Star, uh, yes. but it was just a, just a single episode. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think he's he's uh, reinventing um, TV right now and stories. Yeah, he's just reinventing it. Yeah, we're huge fans. fans, very big fans. Here's this my daughter. Prolific. It's awesome. Oh hi! Here, come here, Grania. Yeah? <laughs> she just got in from teaching. This oh, is wow. Gabby and Kathleen. It's so nice to meet you. It's great to meet you. We hear you're a Halloween baby. We hear you're a Halloween baby. Yeah. Wow. So you always <laughs> have the coolest parties, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know that I had a lot of birthday parties. Everyone wanted to get trick or treating. Yes. You did have birthday parties yes. just before. We always, she always had birthday parties just before everybody went trick or treating. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're actually throwing a masquerade ball, kind yeah. of for like. Halloween time. So if you want to think of any like party ideas, there's one right there. <laughs> oh, masquerade. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. It was nice to it was meet you. great meeting you. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. That's Grania. Uh, that was lovely. Very lovely. Um, so to bring it back to Red Tide, not that you would need it at all, but would you take the little black pill? My life's been on a little black pill. Uh, I've had all sorts of chances, all sorts of opportunities. Um, I have the family I want, uh, uh, which is sort of the end of my dreams. My, 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 my world is finished at that point. So I'm, 
I've sort of took it when I was young. Oh, at that, at the, what was it? The Shore Inn restaurant? The oh, Shore the Shore Point Inn. Inn. Shore Point the Shore Point Inn. Inn. There was something in that um, cake. Yeah, there was something in that yeah, cake. That was the news. Well, I've been looking for uh, those, uh, I've been looking for, um, how do I say this? I've been following my dreams for a long time. No black pill needed. Yeah, no black pill needed. <laughs> no, no. Um, to keep going with the black pill thing though, we were watching the show and we thought it was really funny. It would be really funny if somebody were to take the black pill expecting it to heighten their writing or their singing. Um, but really it just develops a secret talent that nobody really knew, knew that they had. For example, I can do the stitch voice and I think that I would be able to do the stitch voice really, really well on the black pill. Um, so do you have any secret talents that you think you would heighten after taking the black pill? Well, I sing. Okay. okay. Uh, and I've done, you know, I did Guys and Dolls on Broadway and in, in, uh, uh, 2009. Oh, wow. But uh, uh, secret. I don't think so. I, I'm a good storyteller. Okay. Okay, yeah, very so, cool. So I, you know, and given the fact that we're, that I'm in this business and, you know, I'm not acting all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we always write when we're, when we can, and we always come up with ideas when we can. I direct I have directed in the past and I continue to do that and um, form sh stories and shape stories and um, working with a good friend now who's starting his own production company that, uh, so um, I think I'm sort of tapping into all of that. In my imagination, what I'd like to have is a, 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 a possible thing is uh, an ambassador-like way to rule the world in a good way. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's you know, an interesting like, juxtaposition mm -hmm. with the black pill too. That is. So. It really is. And mm -hmm. you know, look, at, look at all of the forces that you're against if you're ruling the world in a way that uh, takes humanity into consideration. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I said, well, and we've had people like that, we know you know, leaders like that, but it's certainly different than uh, than uh, dictatorship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Well. I, but but I don't. I don't have that skill. So. <laughs> and you don't need the black pill anyway. It's so. True. No, <laughs> that's right. That's um, right. Okay. Well, let's turn back to this season. Um, did you shoot on location uh, in Provincetown? No. No. Hmm. Interesting. I was betting yeah. yes. I was also betting wow. yes. Okay. It looks good, doesn't it? It, it looks, looks fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> it really yeah. does. It really well, does. Would you like to visit sometime? Oh, I'd, I'd love to. You know, I've never been there. I'm yeah. being from New Jersey. I, there are so many places I'd like to go to in the Northeast. I'd love to go to uh, Arc, uh, Acadia uh, National Forest up in Maine. I would love to see that place. I've, I've, um, I have been to Maine. I've been to Portland. I did shows in Massachusetts and New York and Jersey. And so I, I but I'd love to go there. Yeah, especially now. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm, this person, this play that I'm doing now um, was actually done for two weeks in not Provincetown. I think it is Provincetown. It's called the Harbor Stage. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm in contact with the artistic director and the guy who did this one person play. Yeah, okay, well, I'll yeah. look into that. Yeah. Um, your filmography is so vast and so varied. Does it reflect your television viewing preferences when you take a break from being a performer on screen to being a viewer behind, in front of the screen? Um, sort of, um, but at the same time, there's so much now, it's hard to keep up. And uh, my daughter watches all the time. My wife watches all the time. Uh, my other daughter watches all the time. So they're watching different things and throwing things at me. So there's so much right now. It's just like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And I'm trying, and I, I like to be busy. So I'm trying to read my own stuff. I'm trying to write my own stuff. I'm, uh, I'm trying to 
read some books and read other people's plays. Uh, and just recently I've gotten some, a couple of plays that I, I might wanna do. So I'm reading a lot of things like that. I, I, I guess if I, I'll tell you what I'm watching right now. It's the Ken Burns uh, documentary on Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah. So, and that, that's, uh, uh, it was in its third night last night. Uh, I didn't watch that yet. So that's the next thing on my, on my thing. I do want to watch, uh, um, Ted Lasso. I, I, um, you know, and I, I'm, we are sort of in the middle of the season of White Lotus. Mm -hmm. um, oh yes. So there, there are things like that. Yeah. Great. You know, yeah. I love to see friends on TV. And given the you fact that I lived all the time, in, yeah, I'm sure. I, I do. And given the fact that I lived in Chicago for so long, I see a lot of those people on on the Dick Wolf shows. So I love seeing those shows just to see friends. And when I see them in New York, I see the same thing. And uh, you know, with people out here in Barry and other shows, it's so nice to see friends. I like to see friends work. I like to see their success. I'm excited by it. So that's nice. Thank you. A good friend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as your craft goes, what is your process like when you book a new gig? Like what sort of character work do you do for a new role? Well, something has happened in the last year or so that I've realized that the audition is not the role. And I, and I sometimes hang on to that as an actor. I think, oh, I auditioned with this scene, so I'm gonna go and do this, the same sort of thing. And then all of a sudden the writing changes. You get to the set and it's totally different. Um, so the process really is availability, emotional availability, if he's that kind of a character. Uh, if it's a, another kind of character, if it's a broad character, I did a play, I did a, a TV show, oh, it seems like 20 years ago now. And it, the director said to me, this was a recurring role in a show called Push Nevada. And it was, my name was Middle Management Man. So the three M's. <clears throat> and I just thought this guy was so goofy. And the director was looking at me oddly throughout the entire episode, uh, my shooting of the entire episode. And by the end of it, by the, when the last scene was finished, he said, you know, I never thought you'd be able to carry that character all the way through, which, and uh, you did it wonderfully. And I really thanked him for it. It was really, a, a Charles, his name was, the, I forget his last name, but I think he works on uh, Shonda Rhimes shows now. But anyway, uh, I, was, I was really well complimented, but it also gave me the feeling, now coming from the theater, you can do some broad characterizations and they can be realistic, especially if you're emotionally available and you are working off of the person you're across from. Um, he seemed to be surprised by that. And he seemed to be surprised that I would bring a character in that wouldn't have the longevity for even one single episode, let alone four, I think that I did. Um, uh, but that's different now. This show, it's not different. And this role was a total emotional role. And it was a realistic sort of role of a guy at the end of his life who's ready to you know, jump off the diving board, uh, which he hasn't done at all. Um, so anyway, I just think that it's, you know, I'm getting this a long way around. I'm so sorry. No, 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 we think, appreciate it. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. I just think that it's uh, uh, emotional availability is very important. And whatever you're working on, whatever it is, be ready to let it go when you get to the set. And really talk and listen. Oh. Um, that was great. Uh, what have been some of your favorite roles that you've had? I love doing that one on Push Nevada. I thought it was so funny and ridiculous. And there was, a, there was an actor in Hollywood back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. His name was uh, Pangborn. Uh, Pang, Pangborn was his last name? P-A-N-G-B-O-R-N. 
I forget what his first name is, but he was the most ridiculous guy you'd ever want to see, but he was funny. Mm -hmm. He was, they were all, a lot of funny guys like that in the thirties. I sort of like those guys. They're sort of fun. <clears throat> Uh, Everett Horton is another one. It was in a lot of uh, 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 Fred Astaire movies. But my favorite to date is hard to say. It's very hard to say. Um, I enjoyed doing uh, Roswell, uh, where I played the, the uh, I enjoyed doing that. Um, but a lot of mine are single shots. I do a single shot here, a single shot there. I did a show called The Closer with uh, Kira Sedgwick. And I, I played um, uh, another sort of middle management man in a nursing home who was basically uh, a bureaucrat right out of Nazi Germany. And I would make sure that there were no empty beds in the place by the beginning of the next month, which meant if I thought somebody was gonna die between the 21st and the 30th, I would have to make sure they died. And that, another element of, I can't believe that this could happen, already happened 50 years, 70 years before I did that show. Mm -hmm. And I love doing that role. I love holding, as Shakespeare said, the mirror up to nature. And I love to surprise and, and, uh, uh, and awaken and shock. I like that. What you do with Ray's role. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, and have you had any favorite lines, like any lines that are just stuck in your head that kind of like ring in there every now and then? I'm doing a play now that has so many great lines. My wife keeps telling, uh, saying the lines to her first graders. <clears throat> it's just so funny. You should hear John Colvenbach's language in this play called Stand Up If You're Here Tonight. It is so good. And we bring, may bring it to New York. And if we do, I'll let you know. Oh, but, if you do, we'll <clears throat> absolutely be there. Right. Oh, good. So, you know, uh, my one famous line is, I don't know. That is a good one. Yeah. You, you know that already. Right? We do. There's another one. There's another one that uh, was another shocker. And I think it was sort of the biggest laugh in the whole movie. And this was my very first movie. And it was also, um, um, what's his name? Oh shoot, Billy Crystal's first movie. And it was That's called, cool. uh, it was called Running Scared. Uh -huh. And my line was, the scene had a lot of uh, shits in it. Mm -hmm. And my line was, uh, I'm, I'm a drug chemist, I'm a chemist for the police. And uh, uh, Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines are both uh, detectives. And they come walking past me and I say that these drugs are shit. And Gregory Hines says, uh, oh, it's good shit. <laughs> I, and I say, it's shit shit. This shit isn't worth shit. <laughs> it's, it's not my favorite line. <laughs> Uh, because it was my first movie and my family was like, oh, well, you very, very nice job. <laughs> <They're back. Yeah. laughs> so this is what you went to college for. So, um, um, but that's a, a pretty funny line. Mm -hmm. And there's some other things, you know, I, I, I don't think about them much. So I, and I, when I'm done with a play, I sort of forget them. Yeah. When I'm done with a, you know, a movie, I sort of forget them. Um, but I'm sure there are others that are pretty good too, and I, but I wish I could think of them. Yeah. Well, those are some pretty solid. Yeah, those are some pretty. So. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right here. Man, how many times a day do I say that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, let's move on to some um, more awesome questions. But actually, I'm going to add in a question. What are you writing right now? Um, I'm writing, I'm putting my family story to rest where it should be yeah good. you know my my parents they're they're lost hopes and uh if they had a, a 
a pill, maybe their lives would be different too. You know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure if it's poems or, or short stories or, or long form, but that's, that's it. Very cool. Yeah. Um, well, we already know that you've worked with so many incredible actors. Are there any that you haven't worked with yet that you really want to? I'd love to work with Kathy Bates. Oh, I was disappointed yeah. she wasn't in this season. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I've seen her in the grocery store, <laughs> but I've very never worked oh, with her. Yeah, that is very American Horror Story. <laughs> it is very, it is very mundane American Horror Story. Um, <laughs> So I'd love to work with her. Uh, I'd, I, I, oh, so many. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kathy's uh, good. And, oh yeah. And, and this cast is terrific. I'm so proud to be working in this cast, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Well, um, in that very same note, who are some actors that you have worked with and you've learned something from? Uh, James Earl Jones uh, was great to work with. Um, that was the first top of show role I ever had in, in Chicago. And he was just such an, a wonderful man. And, uh, it was wonderful to work with him. I worked with a woman named Layla Robbins on that show. And, and she and I did uh, subsequently another movie with each other a couple of years later. But uh, that was a wonderful thing to do. Um, uh, F. Murray Abraham, always curious, always excited always making sure that he's his attention is out and about and in action he's terrific and I, my guess is that you know i'm i am not a clark gable type which you know already and uh i'm more of an f murray abraham type uh, of character actor who's uh who he, i find that i have a need to make myself um, enjoyable to watch on camera, which is a tricky situation when you, you know, yeah, when, when you look like F. Murray Abraham or myself, <laughs> not to diss F. Murray Abraham at all. I think he's a very handsome man. As are you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to some of the absolutely anything questions where it gets a little gets a little wild um so you're just gonna have to roll with it but these are some fun questions okay okay all right so our first one um bel noir and austin use islands in the stream as their first karaoke song in the episode and we were wondering what would be your duet karaoke song and with who would you sing it with a duet mm -hmm, a duet oh god <laughs> you don't bring me flowers mm. okay who are you seeing it with yeah that's a good question i and it really could be a a, a knockdown drag out fight with franny that's for damn oh. sure. right yeah i mean there's a there's an act for it it's a it's mud wrestling it would be mud wrestling karaoke okay oh i love it <laughs> i would love to see it yeah <laughs> Okay, so in the episode, Ray could not be swayed by Belle um, at the suggestion of calamari for that restaurant. What appetizer would would make you go to that restaurant? <laughs> These um, are tough questions. Yeah, this is where I the know, real it is, hard it really question is. comes in. All right, uh, when I was in Paris uh, 30 years ago, I had a little money because uh, Home Alone got me some residuals uh, from Blockbuster for a number of years. On Block it was a very good year for Blockbuster to open. Um, and uh, I had uh, escargot in puff pastry. That wow, was a lot going uh, on. With, with a brown cream sauce. Okay. That was astonishing. And I think it was probably a truffle sauce. Oh, okay. So, I, I, you can't beat that. Yeah. Okay, so it's that appetizer over the haunted dune tour any day. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Okay. Totally. <laughs> totally. Um, if only, if only she would have said that. 
Oh, yeah. Maybe things would have been differently. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so in the same vein as food, as a Jersey boy, I'm sure that you're plenty aware that there is no better bagel than a New Jersey bagel. So what is your bagel order? Um, uh, I like a sesame seed. Nice. Sesame seed, garlic, toasted. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and to keep riding the Jersey wave here, Provincetown, Massachusetts was obviously a very charming location for American Horror Story Red Tide. Um, are there any cities in New Jersey that you think could be a prime location for American Horror Story? Well, I would love to see something down in the, the Jersey Pines. Oh, like some Jersey Devil type? Yes. Type of oh, thing. Yes. That would let's be really, let's see what's in there. Let's really oh, examine yeah. what's in there. That's underneath good. in that huge massive reservoir of water underneath the jersey pines and oh, the yeah. haunted nature at night and maybe we'll find that uh, russian guy from the sopranos yeah we should call him ryan Mur yeah, ryan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm um i'm from right above the pinelands right where the pinelands ends so um yes i'm always driving around and wondering if i'm going to see the jersey devil leap from tree to tree but it's so funny yeah. <laughs> okay, this next one is going to make you think a little bit. Okay. Tell us a joke you wish you came up with, and we're going to laugh as if you came up with it, okay? Um, <laughs> okay, I just heard it this weekend. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was this Mexican magician and who announces to the audience that uh, I'm going to disappear on three. Uno. Dose, poof, he disappears without a trace. Uh, <laughs> so good, so clever. Good. On the spot, like, uh, no. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Every laughing. Year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. Can't oh, no. Me. Can you hear me now? Yes. I don't know okay. what it is. Do you have mics on or? No. no. The computer oh, wow. is just like, hmm, wouldn't that be funny if she can't yeah, hear can't hear yeah. yeah. Okay. Strange. Um, so every year, instead of hosting a Friendsgiving, um, which is, you know, like Thanksgiving, but with your friends, we host a Freddy's giving, which is essentially a Friendsgiving party that is centered and themed around Freddie Mercury. What celebrity, what, what celebrity would you have as your theme for your Friendsgiving? Tracy, let's Thanksgiving. Oh, okay, yeah, Tracy let's do it. Thanksgiving. All right, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Nope. <laughs> you remember the play August Osage County? Yes, yes. He wrote it. Oh wow! Okay, yes, you're right. That is an excellent Friendsgiving theme. Yes, that's a that's a Tracy. Let's uh, let's Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's a let's giving. It's a let's it's, giving. <laughs> It's less giving and it's gonna get real intense. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's a very good friend of mine. Oh. And uh, he's a, 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 I have known him for 36 years and he is a, a great inspiration. Wow, okay, well, I think you need to go text him and be like, hey, instead of friends giving, we're having one in your honor. Mm -hmm. I'll let him know. Yeah. I'll email him. Yeah, perfect, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, well, you were on Will and Grace. I'm a huge fan. So we must ask, Will or Grace? Uh, uh, what does that say about me? Let me think. Uh, <laughs> Answer it any way you want. <laughs> well, I had a friend on that show and it wasn't either of them, it was James Burroughs. Mm. And, and I miss him terribly. I haven't seen him in years. So I, I'm, um, although he was nominated for an, uh, an Emmy, for a show that he just did. I forget what the show is. But um, 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 it would be a Jim, Jim Burroughs. There you go. I love it. Yeah. I yeah, the answer to the answer is James. Yeah. I love it. James Burroughs. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So if you were a professional fighter, what would your walkout song be? Did I win or lose? Ooh, you're, well, you're going, you're to, going, to, going to compete. Yeah. Oh, my walk, walk too, yeah. I see. Yes, okay, my walk. Uh, you know, I used to play soccer in New Jersey and uh, our soccer song was just a strange, strange 
walkout song. Okay. And it, well, that's what I would choose because it would mean so much to me. And it would be Sail on Sailor, the Beach Sail Boys. On Sail on Sailor. Good yep. to know. I have to make note of that. I um, yep. I fight professionally and I have walkout songs and I always try to go strange. So that's something that I'll have to look into. It's recently, it's been like horror movie scores. I've done the Gremlin Rag several oh, times wow. recently. So got to look into Sail on Sailor. Okay, let me just make sure that it's Sail on Sailor. I'm going to look it okay. up. <laughs> um, um, it's on a... Uh, album an album called holland which they uh they recorded in amsterdam um uh holland hold on a second i think i have it um uh, holland hold on i'm so sorry no no no, no, no you're good it is yeah <laughs> oh here it is um it's, did I say Sail on Sailor? Uh -huh. No, it's not. It's called, uh, hold on. A California Saga. Oh, and the California name of it is saga. called, and it's called California. And there are three segments of California Saga. And the last one is, is, is uh, um, California. California from California side. Good okay, we're gonna play it. Yeah, we're absolutely yes. gonna play it. All right. Okay. Oh. oh, we can't hear. Oh, oh you can't? No, no, but we're we're gonna look it up because Gabby will take it into consideration for the next fight. <laughs> That's what it looks like. California no. saga. California. Oh, is it the Beach, Beach Boys. Boys? Okay. Good to know. Yeah, that sounds promising. Yeah. It's anti it's antithetical to competition and winning, completely. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. That's exactly really, how I like my walkout songs. <laughs> oh my gosh! And and as I listened to it, I, I I played soccer a long time ago, so and in high school, and as I listened to it, it's really sort of about uh, environmentalism, oh. which is far out. My the guy who chose this song, a friend of mine, Steve Mazuko. Uh, choosing this song in 1972, yeah. 73, it's sort of astonishing. Okay. And then we're going to be going now in 2021. Yeah. Wow, that is great to know. I actually, um, one of my recent walkout songs was with American Horror Story in mind. I did the Tonight You Belong to Me that they have when, you know, Cody Byrne comes back after the whole murder house thing. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. What kind of boxing? Is it kickboxing? I actually do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so grappling. Wow, fantastic. She's very good. Well, I don't know about that, but I do have some good walkout songs, so. <laughs> oh my God, that's fantastic. And are they in your earphones or are they in public system? It's a public system, yeah, the venue plays it and I walk out and try not to trip very on my face cool. with all the fog machine and everything. It's very theatrical. So it actually. is very wow. theatrical. Yeah. That is very cool. <laughs> um, very cool <laughs> so to sort of wrap things up the part one finale of american horror story double feature red tide premieres tonight and what would you like to see happen and what do you think ray cunningham would have liked to see happen i think ray cunningham uh saw what he wanted to see oh, that's true yeah honestly and um um I, I would like everyone to realize that they didn't need to take the pill. You know, I, th I think I'd like that, uh, the uh, uh, just click your heels three times moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you had it inside of you all along. They did. Let's see if we get that tonight. Yeah, let's yeah. see if we get it. <laughs> I bet we do for somebody. Yeah, for somebody. I mean, Not for Sarah, tragically, we, we did kind of get it for her, but yeah, heart-wrenching way, so. Yes, yes. Well, that's the end of our questions. Um, well, it's, it's been fun. You guys yes. have been fun. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Um,